So hello everyone and welcome to the Dig podcast. I am so excited for our guest today. It is Alan Kavanagh Jones. And for anyone who doesn't know who that is, Alan is the co-founder of Wax Births Wax. She is the co-founder of Wax Births, the salon, and she is also co-founder of Hair Wax, which is an at-home waxing kit, which we all need in our lives right now. But I was so excited about having Alan on the podcast today because I know she's going to give such great insights and she does. She'll talk about her journey on social media, how she has grown her business on social, um, but also how she cares about her community and her customers. And that's actually what was a driving force of getting her business through the pandemic. She cared first about them, not about herself, about things that were about to launch, about things that were so important for their growth and development. She first she stopped all of that, and I think that's so inspirational, and cared about her clients and her customers and her community first. And I think people who are listening will really be inspired by that. It's actually, um, it was, um, very um, emotional to listen to where the way she put her own their own needs of their business on the back burner and put her people first and um, she also talks about having the confidence to launch during a pandemic because they then went on to launch their amazing new product and how they did that embracing the traditional means of journalism and and the traditional means of PR but it got it had such a ripple effect on social anyway for their product and their business so that's interesting to listen to and then she also gives us great tips about our mindset how we're all in such a challenging time but there are ways to kind of navigate through it and and tips for social it's a jam-packed podcast and I can't wait for you all to listen I know you're going to love her as much as I do the dig podcast is a podcast that focuses on business life and all things social media. It's a place of learning and one where you can take away actionable tips that you can put into practice straight away in your business. I hope it inspires you to reach your goals and never give up on that dream. Hello Alan, thank you so much for agreeing to be on. Thank you for having me. I hope I live up to the bio. (laughs) You will, you will. I know you will. But do you want to just um, start off, Alan? I know I just gave a wee brief um, history there, but like where, you know, where did your business journey begin and, and like what has it kind of been through to get where you are today? Well, I suppose Wax first began with our salon and I opened that in 2008. And that was kind of my first venture into working, you know, for myself and being self-employed at that stage. And then Trish came to join me six months later and the two of us just worked really well together. We worked really hard and, you know, grew the business um, very quickly. We were, you know, we made a great reputation for for the salon. And prior to opening it, I knew, um, I suppose I, I had been working in salons before and being able to open my own, I knew I wanted like the best wax is the best of everything for my clients who were so precious to me um, and that's where the idea came of you know making my own wax because I had tested out every other brand I was getting brands in from all over the world to try them out and um, you know I liked bits and pieces of different things but I really knew there was something missing and you know although I didn't know at that stage how to go about making it um, I think in the early days of starting a business, you know, your naivety about things is amazing. It's not to be discounted at all because that's what gives you the fearlessness because you don't know. So, um, you know, I took that and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to make this myself. I'm going to do my own thing and I'm going to create a wax that I know will be amazing for my clients that will, um, you know, be protective of their skin that will give them the best results that won't be as painless pain painful for them and um that for a therapist that is easy to use so that was the first kind of step into I suppose what has grown into being um you know a full professional brand for other salons as well to use so there's probably people listening going like, I want to create my own product. But And I've spoken to other entrepreneurs before who talk about this journey. But how do you actually begin that journey of making a product like yours? Like, who do you reach? Who did you reach out to? Where did you get the kind of support to start that? 
Um, and I suppose I didn't have any support starting out. I was very much alone. It was very much, um, you know, I think now it's easy to find great support as in um, networking groups, uh, even online virtually um, or through different organizations, you know, your local enterprise board or enterprise Ireland. There's a lot more there that is more known about. I'm sure they were there, you know, but I didn't know about them. So it was very much a, a solo kind of thing where you you didn't have any support you just have to kind of get on with it and pick yourself up and keep going um i think depending on what kind of products people are making it's going to be very different to how they navigate that so i knew through my experience of waxing i knew how i wanted products to perform i knew how i needed it to to work and what i needed it to do so i was coming at it from a very practical kind of place so um, I was able to find a chemist that, you know, helped me develop that and they were able to bring a different side to us. And we've worked very closely ever since. We've never private labeled anything. Um, everything we make is completely, you know, unique and bespoke to ourselves. And although at the start, um, you know, they didn't understand maybe waxing like I did, um, I think that's what can make a great partnership with, you know, manufacturers or suppliers is that you're both bringing your expertise to the table. So what I've learned about product development now is hopefully as equal to what they've learned about waxing at this stage. <laughs> and are they still, is that still a partnership where you are very close even to yeah. this day then? Yeah, very close. And I think, you know, sometimes we talk about it and look back over our journey of you know me being probably just full of ambition and enthusiasm and fearless and just like I want to do this and I want to make it happen and I'm going like who are you what we don't do that <laughs> and you know now it's, it's growing and I remember way back I said you know someday I'll be you know your biggest customer like that was my thing I was going to be I'm going to be like you know the biggest thing you're making and you know that we're working towards but we've we've you know worked really well together and that's you know it's nice when you find you know suppliers or manufacturers or you know people in business that you you know can maintain a relationship I think that's really important if you are building a brand or building um you know your company in, gen in general like trying to you know nurture those relationships so that you can um keep them going and that both parties get you know a great experience out of us because it's all about the experience there's no there's no end there's no you know finish line you know you're in it what you're doing yeah. every day and the experiences you're having every day that's it so if you're looking for the oh, when is it if it's that is it it's the living and breathing yeah. of us every day and um, even ultimately if your goal is to to sell your company and you have that as your end line it's still the experience of building it to do that is the is the it you know so I think having good relationships or great relationships and you know having knowing that the importance of that as you as you move on in your business is is super important and it's interesting for you to say that way back when you were doing it there wasn't the opportunities kind of that there is now for somebody who wants to develop a product but you still managed to break down those kind of barriers of not knowing and is that because you were very vocal and passionate about what you wanted to do and you just made someone listen whenever you were speaking about your product i guess i'm trying to think of ways that people now who are maybe um, feeling intimidated about the thought of trying to create a product i suppose if you could do it way back then when there wasn't the opportunities there's no reason and why people can't kind of like explore that possibility now yeah I mean when I was starting there was like Facebook was only becoming a thing like it wasn't even you know we didn't have the resource of everything on our our phone on an app on you know a, a google search as well as like everybody who has a company is now searchable googleable findable like that wasn't uh, the thing but I think and I've never lost this, my obsession with waxing. I'm sure I'm like the worst, you know, <laughs> person at a party because it's all I'll talk about. Because it's all I truly am obsessed with. So that would never stand in my way because my passion for it is so strong. Um, and there was just that dogged determination, which I think you'll find a common thread to people who really, you know, make it happen. 
you know there's yeah. loads of people that have the, the the ideas and stuff but ultimately it's you know the people that really go for it and I think if you have that you just see blinders on like the, even now there's I don't there's no other distraction I can't see yeah you do your you know your things are more kind of advanced now so we might have to you know analyze and see what would be the the pros and cons and different parts for our business but ultimately if you know I know we're going in that direction or I know that's the next product that is if there is no if what there's always going to be hurdles but it's how you get over them around them under them break them down they're not there to to put an end to your dream or what you're trying to achieve they're just there so get around them you know it's not (laughs) any other thing you know yeah no you're speaking like a true entrepreneur there and I guess that will just inspire some people if they're listening that you know when you're passionate enough your dreams can come true so I wanted to talk to you about like you touched on social media and how things have changed now and especially for businesses how crucial it is now especially in the times we're in and everything's went online but what how I know how important it's been for you because I've been watching your journey but if you want to tell kind of the listeners how important it's been and what way you've grown and how what your how your strategy has kind of changed on social from maybe what it used to be. Yeah, I think it's um I think it's always changing. You know, the the nature of social media is that it's constantly moving forward and moving in different directions and moving unpredictably with different um, you know, apps or different types of, you know, social media that people like to engage in. So it's an ever evolving thing. So what kind of worked when we started probably, you know, isn't relevant now. What might have been the best, you know, your best strategy last year might work today. So it's very much just an of the moment thing in one element. Now, obviously, there's a lot that goes into, you know, people's social media marketing and planning. But as, you know, the gush part of it is that it's always going to be changing so I wouldn't get too hung up if you were starting out like oh god I'm scared and I don't want to do this just jump in because probably what you're going to do today in six months isn't you know the way it's going to be done anymore whether it's you know um on Snapchat or Facebook or whatever the case may be because they'll have new elements that are brought in so I wouldn't let somebody's um apprehension of using any of the social media hold them back to tell their message or tell their story when we opened the salon, there was Facebook kind of just starting. So you were trying to get all your friends to like the page. And, um, you know, I really saw Facebook then for the business as, um, you know, a word of mouth just amplified. And for me, um, growing a waxing business, it is all word of mouth because uh, we're in a very tricky position even now that we can't share our before and after content like you can for nails, like you can for hair. Like we have to be very creative how we, um, you know, promote our services or our product or how great they are or the before and after of it. So we've always had to think a little bit differently about it. And definitely for getting clients into the salon, it was word of mouth that has always worked for us. That was what made Waxford, you know, put us on the map in the first place. So when we started using Facebook or anything like that, it was literally just word of mouth amplified because I think for most people, you know, if their friend or somebody they know says, oh God, I went and got a great wax in this place, you take that, you know, more on board than seeing an ad on social on your phone or in print or anything like that because it's such an intimate thing and it's such a I suppose a private thing in a sense so we've always been aware of that as we grew it and then when we um started wax first wax which is a business where we manufacture more wax so different waxes um products retail products and then we sell them to other salons and spas to use um as their wax of choice and um, again, it was because of our kind of success that they saw in the salon and they thought, well, you know, I could have a piece of that for my salon because the girls know what they're doing. They, they, they're doing the do, you know, they're in the salon. They've done what I'm doing. So I think we were a great ally and still are for salon owners in the fact that, you know, we are waxers and we are running the business. So they were able to see that and then 
you know, we try and produce content that they can literally just, you know, screenshot and share because they're busy and they might be one or two or three in, in their team. They won't have resources to sit down and plan out social. So for us as a, a brand, as a supplier, I guess you could say, we're trying to, you know, um, create stuff that's really easy and ready for them to share because we want their customers when they go on to your local salon that you might have liked on Instagram or Facebook, that you can see very clearly what brands they use. And if you were looking for a wax for salon that you can see clearly, oh yeah, there it is. And it's recognizable without the the salons having to kind of not waste time, nothing's wasted, but spend time where they could be actually doing other things where they can use our content and to promote the brand for their own salon, which has worked really well, you know, so we do try and keep that in mind. But I think social media, it's, it's ever evolving and um, it can be difficult to navigate and find your feet. And I think that's why going back to the basics of, you know, what is your brand values? You know, what are they and what's your vision? And I would always talk about this till the cows come home that, you know, if you don't know your brand values you kind of are at, you know, you're you're not off the starting blocks. You need to know your brand values like just like you know your name. You know, it has to be so solid because they don't change. So as you go forward making um, decisions in your business, unless you'll think about the social media aspect of it. So whether you're thinking, is this the right platform? Are these the right um, people to maybe collaborate with or whatever? You bring that back to your brand values and go, what are our values? And you can name them out and does this decision match those? And if it doesn't, then that's it. And if it does, then you know you're on the right track. So we would always, you know, come back to that constantly. No matter, you know, as we've grown that, hang on, let's, is, is this matching our brand values? Is this the right, you know, app for us? Is this the right, um, whatever it might be, collaboration, is this the right trend, whatever. So I think the brand value part will help people who are starting maybe that are a bit scared. Maybe they don't use social media themselves a lot or they don't speak the camera on their social media. That will help them. So it's really those things that you might start out when you're planning your business and think, oh, I just want to get stuck in, but they're really the, the foundations, the important thing, and knowing your your customer profile so who are you talking to when you're speaking to them on whatever way you choose to communicate to your customer that you know who that person is and I think and um, that can be a overwhelm for people like you said they don't know how to get started they don't know what to even come on and talk about but like what you've said there is brilliant if they keep thinking about why they're doing this what their brand means to them what their yeah. business stands for that'll always drive what kind of content to create anyway but I get why people get so overwhelmed like it's a minefield isn't it there's so much like they're, they're afraid to come on and say the wrong thing or but if you just keep remembering like what Alan said why am I doing this what does my customer want to see it actually helps you create the most amazing content like your people want to see why your wax is brilliant why it's pain not as painful as other waxes yeah. why it's so kind on the skin so if you think of those things that obviously has led your content like I used to watch when you would have done like live videos on um, you would have got the team in I remember and, and showing different things in the salon and stuff and even though I hate getting waxed I was like obsessed with watching and not to just say this because I'm interviewing you now there is a local salon then that gets um your wax and I noticed it then because I was following yeah. you and it was just like the ripple effect of social and then the double dipping thing that you talked about which I never pay, like I'm just going to be honest I never really paid much attention yeah. to that before because I and then I'd be horrified now but it's all because of you so yeah. like it's amazing to think that you're you know in you know in the south of Ireland just promoting your business on social but I you've affected me in County Tyrone when I go to my little small salon so so if yeah. anybody's listening now and they really aren't sure about the effects of social I think this is a pure example of how your educational technique that you do on social has affected me so so I you know I want you to know that obviously as well but I want the listeners to know that never think if you're promoting your brand continually that it won't have that knock-on effect and ultimately result in sales because now I only yeah. like that wax to be used and I won't stay if you're double dipping because of balance. <laughs> 
And I, I think a part of that is that, um, you know, we do a kind of, we do talk about that consistently because yes. it is something that's important to us as a brand. Like it's something yes. that, um, us as a team, it's important to us. So it's a message that we want to be consistent with. Um, and that's why, you know, it's one of those things that we, we revisit frequently, um, because it's, you know, it is part of what we would teach here. We have an academy and we also do online training. Um, and that would be very, you know, a part of a message. So we're not deviating from, you know, yes. what we, what we're saying in one, one area. I have always wanted the Dig podcast to be a place of learning and a place of inspiration, but I have also wanted it to be a place where businesses can gain exposure. That's why I'm so excited to open up the Dig podcast to businesses and allow them to pitch their business to you. I'm delighted to be able to introduce Buzz Off at Bumble and B to you, your local independent family holiday specialist. Uh, we can help you uh, get yourselves and the children away on that dream holiday, even this year where everything is that little bit more difficult. Now is the time to make sure that you're trusting your holiday plans with the experts and family holidays are at the heart of everything that we do. So no matter if it's a staycation here on the island of Ireland, if you're looking to head across the water, potentially visit theme parks or a city break, uh, we can help. If you're looking to travel overseas this year, uh, there are various different restrictions and requirements. Uh, we can talk you through everything. We take the stress out of arranging that family trip. And now is the best time to be looking for your summer 2022 break. So many people are transferring holidays from this year to next, which means that free child places are becoming more and more limited. Get in early, book with a low deposit. You can uh, then use flexible payments right the way through to the balance and you can have something to look forward to, which I'm sure you will agree everybody needs at the minute. So you can call into the store in Ballymoney. You can contact us by phone. You can go, uh, check out the deals which are posted daily on both Instagram and Facebook. But most importantly, just drop us a line. Whatever your budget, whatever your requirements, we're here to help. No, that's definitely, I get that, and I hope everyone else do too, but, um, so obviously, like, when I'm talking on the podcast, because I've just launched the podcast, like, uh, well, it's about three months ago now, COVID is the flipping topic of conversation for so many people, and Alan, mm. like, you know, my God, the, the effect on business owners, it actually, my heart breaks for some, we've all been through a journey, myself included, but I... Yeah always like to talk to people about how they felt when they had to close and and how they've kind of navigated through that. And I know you've got quite a journey in the past year, but do you want to tell us a wee bit about what happened when you heard, like everybody knows where they were when they heard they had to close, but what happened? Yeah, I think we were, we had heard, you know, you, you kind of heard the star things and wasn't very sure what was going to happen. And I think it was just before St. Patrick's Day that it was, you know, we knew for definite that this was it. The businesses would would have to close, and I suppose we just go into um nearly a logistics type of um situation where you're like, well, what needs to happen to make sure, you know, we we do and um, you know close up the salon or whatever, and um and then our office and sending people, you know to work from home and what do they need, you know, uh, practicality wise, their computers, their this, their that. Um, and if it was going to be, you know, how long, a couple of weeks, a month, like we didn't know. Um, and then I suppose for Trish and I, as the, you know, the leaders of the, the companies, we needed to think of, well, how is this going to affect our people? So people are going to be, at home and those that can work from home, you know, what is that going to look like for them? You know, are they in um, a situation and a position that that is something that's even doable? And what kind of extra stresses and strains are going to come with that? Um, and then what about our our customers? You know, they've all closed their salons. They don't all have the support. Like we're very lucky here that I have, you know, business partner and have that support not everybody does that so we kind of felt we could step in as their other business partner and their ally and somebody to help them through that 
So I think pretty soon after, like the, the following week when everything was closed, we had gone straight in on our socials and had a plan. So we linked in with Caroline um, from the HR suite. So we were able to do live sessions where she would talk through the practicalities of like how to put your staff on um, whatever scheme they needed or how to be compliant with your HR. So I just felt let's let's get this let's help everybody straight away to make sure they're compliant and help support them then in other areas. So we, yeah, we just, thankfully we had um, contacts and friends that, you know, helped us out with, with producing that content. So we had um, Liz McKeown who does a lot of beauty kind of coaching. So she came and gave us her top tips Um, behind the scenes. We were trying to produce training content that could help support people and um, while they were closed so that they would come back in a stronger position and we had a pure company publicity loft do a session with us and then we did a great zoom session for our stockists then because uh, everything was for public on instagram so it didn't matter if you use waxworks or not at this stage we were just like we want to help all the salons because you know we're in the same position and then we did a separate thing for our own stockists on zoom where we had um, things like a CBT therapist to help with the anxiety. So to help give people the, the techniques and it was amazing to, you know, really help the mental health, I suppose, and how to manage things. So we really kind of changed our direction because that was not our plan for last April at all. Like many businesses, our plan for last April was actually to launch hair, which had been in the makings for years. So that was completely just thrown aside for a second so I said just forget about that for a minute we have to go and um, to make sure that we're doing everything we can to, to support our customer who like ourselves whose business is closed but how can we come out of this stronger and you know I'd always say like where is the opportunity there has to be there has to be one somewhere even if it's for personal development when you're so busy trying to work in your business that you don't get time to work on it and you're always wishing, I wish I could do this and I wish I could train and I wish I could get my contracts and handbooks and, you know, all my other bits together in my business. This was now the time that we just changed direction to put our whole focus on how can we help our customer come out the other end stronger, no matter when that could be and what support could be there for them. So that was that was where we were firefighting straight away. And that's how we kind of maintained it. Um, and did as much for you know not our just our customer it could be any any salon owner um, and that so was guess, hugely important when I'm listening to you and I get this kind of um it's like a running theme when I talk to people on the podcast it's like your community like you always kind of keep your community tight and look after them and you know that kind of like what you're describing now it's just hitting me like that's what's kind of seen you through all of those harder times because you kept your community tight and kept them watching you and interested in what you were doing and seeing that you were actually cared about them you cared about them like you cared yeah. about them for sure and I think we've always shown that like integrity is one of our brand mm. values and I think we've always um, you know, shown up with integrity, whether we're at trade shows or whether we're, you know, dealing with any of our customers. But I think last year, you know, it, the, it really was the proof was in the pudding of, I think, for, for that, that we could, you know, no one knew behind the scenes, I suppose. They didn't know that we had invested all of this time and money and a new team into launching a new business. And that suddenly we were, you know, pressing pause and making the sacrifice because we knew in our hearts that it was the right thing to do, not just for for us, but for our existing customers because of that long term relationship we had with them and of that loyalty. And, you know, because we come back to that, that we want to, you know, put ourselves out there with integrity. So we knew that that was we went against any other kind of advice or any other logic that oh this would be a great time now to sell on the clothes we really shunned that because we were like well hang on this is what we need to do because these are our brand values and this is the walk that we're going to walk whether our you know obviously now they, um, people know we've launched care so they didn't know this at the time 
So, you know, we wanted to make that sacrifice because it was what was true to us as a team and as a company. And um, that was kind of the, the harder decisions, I suppose, that you make. Um, but better for for you long term because you know you did the right thing. And that's all you can ever try and do is to do the right thing. Well, I really respect that. And when you say that you were ready to launch hair and hair is an at home hair removal kit, like that's hitting me. Yes, this is this is the perfect time. And the fact you put that on the back when you're explaining that to me now, it it is. I yeah, like, it respect huge. respect to you and Trish for doing that. But you know. Then, thankfully, you got you obviously you know looked after your clients, looked after your community, but then you got to launch hair. So tell us about that. How how did that then actually? What what part of the journey did that happen at? Um, well, I suppose all through last year, we're we're thinking, will it ever lift? Will it, will the salons ever open? You know, and we're dealing with um, you know, thousands of salons in the UK, Northern Ireland, and Ireland. So everywhere had different. Um, I suppose lockdown. So in one sense, it felt you were only starting, and then you were shutting down again. So it was it was tricky. But I think we had everybody had got into a groove. All the salons that they kind of knew after the first lockdown. Okay, we know what happens when we close, and you know they know you know yourself going to get your hair or or your beauty done. Like you are loyal to that. The, those salons and your customers are only dying to get back in so I think people's confidence was a little bit more secure in that okay we might be closed but I know the second I open everybody's going to be, be there and yeah yeah exactly and I think our messaging with you know with our customers was that you know you have to have you have to really lean into the confidence that you have in your skills and your ability because nobody is going to replace that at home, trying to do their own nails and trying to, you know, do that. So it's, it's, it's be secure in your ability and what you're bringing to the table and then be able to offer, you know, your customer some other option to keep your, you know, business taking over. So a lot, um, you know, we put out the idea really early on of, um, for anybody who did nails to start making themselves little packs, you know, so that people could take off their gel nails at home and not destroy, you know, all the, the work that had been done and money that had been spent having your nails done for so long. So people had started that and so many salons, they didn't have retail, they didn't have online um, stores and things like that. So we were trying to help support them with smaller ideas. Um, you know, a lot started doing online consultations for skin and all of that. So I think you know, people who had who had jumped in and were serious about uh, trying to keep some level of um, operations going, and then others had made were happy with that they were going to close, and that that was what was right for them. There's no right or wrong. Um, so we were kind of happy. Everybody was taken care of, and then we looked at um, coming back to launch hair uh, earlier this year. So we knew then it had to it had to happen because. We had postponed it nearly, well, not a year, but it was, you know, the April to January when we launched. So financially, we had to, we had to launch, we had to get this out there, and uh, we decided then the end of January that that was when we would, when we would launch. And um, so it was unusual, I suppose, the, the delay you, normally. How do you launch when? You can't launch, as in how do you launch a product and a service now in the times we're in when you can't have the big, you know, grand unveiling at an event and everyone comes and shares it and social and all. Like, what does a yeah. virtual launch look like now? Because I was watching closely. So tell me what way you did that. Well, I suppose hair is, um, you know, it's an, a direct-to-consumer product. So um, retail or um doors as in you know actual places you can go into buy it uh, wouldn't be our first kind of focus it's all, it was an online and e-commerce focus first so that kind of was okay you know we can still do online because you know that's fine and really for any startups that are trying to start up you know not having the pressure of having some big launch party and expenditure of that taken away you don't have to make that decision, you know, it can be a good thing. That's, you know, finding the opportunity in it that you 
don't have that expense um, or risk, you know. So we just went um, just to launch straight on our social medias. So we had, um, I think the day before, we had contacted our, our press list who were kind of uh, journalists and media, print and, and online, to tell them that this was launching. It was under embargo and it was launching the next morning. And they would have been one of the first, I mean, very, very few people knew about hair. It was very much kept under wraps for a very, very long time. Um, because just things in beauty, it's easy to get leaked and things copied and all that type of thing. So we kept it very, very secret. So it was the first that, you know, journalists or beauty journalists even were hearing about it was kind of that evening. I think it was like 5 or 6 p.m., and then we were launching at ten the next morning, so we just wanted to to launch it on our own on our own channels, and um, that was it. Just literally put it out to the world, and then from that it was just went kind of a bit crazy for the first um, the first few days. Yeah. And, and then actually, I seen I think other the, influencers opening their PR pack so that was obviously part of the strategy to get the word out there like and collaborating yeah. with a few influencers yeah we haven't done any any collaborations or anything like that yet um so we would do a normal what would be absolutely normal for any launch is to send out your press pack so we had very very limited um press packs going out we had the ones to the journalists whether they were online or print and then we had a handful to some kind of influencers or bloggers. And I'd say the majority were, you know, personal friends of, of mine or Trisha's. So we didn't do a blanket um, gifting. Um, so we just did very kind of, I suppose, very traditional. Like what we would have done at, before there was, like way back when we started Waxworth, before there was a huge influencer marketing where you're really just, Touching base and uh, with the the beauty press and media people in that that sphere, and then you know we added on a couple of others. Um, so that's refreshing so that was, to hear. It wasn't a blank thing. Yes, yeah, that's refreshing to hear because sometimes people can get so focused on like, oh, I need an influencer to match me, but you went back to the traditional means, the hooked up yeah. with the jer- the beauty. Like that's nice to hear that that is still yeah. alive and very positive. Yeah, I think so. And we'd be very um we'd be very conscious that the you know, the products that we, we make and that we love, um, they're they're quite niche in the sense that not everybody waxes and people who do wax are not going to be as public about it as other people. So it is a, a private thing, whether you're talking about bikini waxing or upper lip waxing or the hair on your chin, not everybody wants to talk about that. Yeah. So we understand that. So we're not going to, I suppose, we're not going to um, financially waste lots of our resources by blanket sending it out to, you know, hundreds of bloggers and influencers and it not suit them or, you know, it just didn't, yeah. we're, we're still, that company is still like a startup. So you do have to watch where you're, where you're kind of spending your money. So the press, they would always are looking for new brands, new things to write about, and they could communicate our message to our customer who might be somebody who's extremely conscious of um, their facial hair. And this was one thing actually when when uh, we had to sh- shut down with with COVID at, last year at the very beginning as a team, we were like, oh my God, what about all the customers that go into all the salons like that use Waxworth or wherever and it's for their lip and they're in every 10 days, two weeks or it's for their chin and that's not going away. And now they're on Zoom or they're on Skype and they're even more self-conscious. So we were a bit like, oh, God. So I think, um, you know, there's a lot to kind of marketing the wax than just everybody can have some and everybody is going to show it and everybody's going to shout about it. That's not always the case. So with the beauty media where somebody is kind of reporting it in a sense of here's the product, here's what it does, here's where you can get it is a lot easier for people who might be quite private about their, you know, that they do need to maintain this at home. This isn't just about, I want to go in and get a bikini wax. Yeah, there's loads of people who want to do that, but there's a whole other element of it. And we knew that from all of our experience of the years waxing. You know, there's a lot of people that get waxed for a lot of different reasons. 
Um, you know, it could be their own privacy. There could be, you know, people transitioning. There's, you know, there's so many reasons yeah. that people don't think about that kind of don't see below the surface of what it is and what it's there for. And I suppose with hair, you know, the market it was already there. You know, there's already market leaders. People are already buying these products um, and using them at home. So it wasn't competing with salons because this is already happening. People are buying these products. But what we were coming with was going, well, hang on, the products that you're buying are not that great. Okay. And I know we can give you a better one because you're buying your hair removal thing in a you know, besides where you're buying, you know, toilet rolls and sanitary pads, and there's nothing, you know, it was a bit kind of where, you know, it's still a part of beauty and people are still beautiful, whether they're waxing, leaving the hair, whatever they choose to be. So we just thought, you know, we can bring a better quality product for sure, because it's what we know, but also with the branding, we can bring something that aesthetically looks like something you're happy to put in your basket and mm-hmm. buy or have in your bathroom, that it's not you know that you're getting it you know picking up your your groceries that it's still part of beauty yeah um so that was another kind of element of it for for launching for hair yeah so uh, we just did a podcast a few episodes back with uh, fiona brown communications who's a pr expert and she very much talked about what you've just said and it's so good to hear a business owner who's now putting that into practice like reaching out to the journalists and forming relationships with them so they then notice you again when you might launch something else again so uh, i I guess that just kind of confirms what fiona had been telling us um a few episodes back so um I've written here, uh, Alan, what advice would you give to businesses who are struggling right now with the way the business world is virtually? Like, thank God we're getting some light at the end of the tunnel about restrictions lifting and hopefully salons getting opened again. And even not salons, ordinary businesses. I know you're a great advocate for all business owners and female entrepreneurs, but what, any tips for, I know you're all about, you know, you're very good at mindset and all that, but any tips for businesses who are struggling right now and don't know if things are going to be okay (laughs) I know it's a hard one because there's no nobody knows so no matter who's handing out the advice that you know that's just their best take on it you know nobody knows what's happening and you know the health of every business going into this um you know is different so um it's not always as straightforward as I suppose you, you, you hear some or read some advices on, you know, coming out the other end, you know, it's not going to be like that for everybody. So I think taking the pressure off yourself that I know a lot of people have had to to decide to close their business. And, you know, there's a big part of that, of accepting that and coming to terms with that and being okay with that, that isn't really ever talked about, you know, and that people feel that they maybe wanted to close their business and, you know, or wanted to stay open and couldn't and just couldn't make it happen. And it's coming to terms with that. So, and then there's the others who maybe are just raring to go and chomping at the bit. So I think it's to try and take the pressure and stress off yourself, first of all, because it's not, you know, anything that anybody did wrong that our businesses had to close. And, you know, as I said before, it's just trying to find some, some small opportunity in it, whether that is that you just have enjoyed the time, extra time with your family, that you've been able to work on your own self or mindset, whether you've been able to upskill or, you know, do something to develop yourself or your business personally, whether you put together, you know, a strategy for the future. Um, and, you know, if you feel your, your mindset is somewhere where it's very strong and focused about reopening, then use that kind of use that energy and use that motivation to really put pen to paper and analyze your business, maybe go through your line costs and see where you can work on and what your kind of goal is for the end of the year. Do you want to, you know, try and break even? Do you want to try and, you know, expand, um, you know, and, and do those things that we kind of maybe struggle to do, the three and five year plans because we never make time for ourselves. So I think it's kind of identifying where you are firstly in your head, um, what your dreams and ambitions are for the business for the next year, 
the following, the following, the following, and then your big, big, you know, your beehive, your big, hairy, audacious goal of where you want to be. And how has that changed? You know, we've recently actually, we've, we've recently um, decided that we're going to be a four day week company for the rest of the year and see how we get on after that. So we're going to be Monday to Thursday. Because I think on reflection of, of our team in our office, uh, the salon is separate, but in our office that, you know, the work is getting done at, a, at a, you know, under pressure with the pandemic and working from home and coming back in then, we really wanted to, to mind everybody that, you know, you can't just whip out the rug from under people from their home life back into trying to catch up. You know, everything ticks along, the world ticks along. So why don't we readjust where we want to be in that? You know, That's amazing. The, I seen where you put that out on social so, that you were down and I was wondering what your thinking was behind that and now you're explaining that it makes sense. Yeah, I think, you know, like the months, the days, the years, they're short, you know, and it's only unfortunately sometimes when people get a big news, but usually bad news, that that kind of occurs that goes oh my god I'm you know working so hard or I'm doing this or I'm not doing that and I'm not looking after myself you know we don't want any of us to hit some big scary moment to get some perspective on well hang on I am working really hard and then it's the weekend and sure I'm also working really hard you know two two of our team members are our moms and it's like you know that's your next you know your other job you're coming in to do one job then you're going home to do another job so we just thought, you know, you, everybody needs more balance. You know, talk about it all the time. But if we can help facilitate that, that the Friday, maybe it is the day you're getting your bits done. Maybe it's the day you're going to the gym and you're not in a panic because you have to get back to go to work or to go to do this. Maybe it's just the day that you're staying in bed watching Netflix. I don't know, but it's your day. Before then, the rest of the, the weekend comes where everybody has obligations of life, family or whatever. So that's amazing we just thought if we can we can it, you know people are always the you know the key to success for any business so if we can help support and keep our our people happy and healthy and motivated and feel that you know they're enjoying their life then that is it because there's no like we said at the start there's no finish line this is it. This is it. This is it. So, and whenever you, know, you said, you need to kind of, sorry, yeah, you need to kind of look at that from from all angles. It's not like right when we finish this, I'll take a day off, and it's not about chasing this finish line that doesn't exist. It's about living kind of in it, in it, in the yeah. moment, <laughs> and trying to find the happiness and balance, yeah. and being happy to come in every day, and then knowing you have your day or you know, just brings a bit more joy to your life that you're living. And whenever we're talking about businesses and how they're feeling right now, like I, and you said about your mindset and realizing that it's, it's happening to everyone and you don't really have a control over the pandemic. Like I, this time last year was in a very different mental position than I'm in now. And thank God I was strong and a good family support. And when I had to close my shop, I thought my life was over but I guess if there's businesses listening you know your life isn't over your life you're in it you're making the best of what the situation is and you make your own decisions I guess based on your own circumstances not what people expect like people didn't expect me to have to close my shop but I needed to for loads of reasons and you know when you're talking about it I'm like god you know people are probably going through turmoil right now but I guess it's just yeah. I don't know. I I I hope that everyone realizes. A, a huge, yeah, I think that's a huge thing, and I've seen a few um a few people who are in the same position who had to to close, and you know I reached out to a few that I would know a little bit to to see could I help support them in any way, and I think the shame of it was a big thing that came up, and you know really there there isn't. I mean they got up and started a business when so many wouldn't. And they've battled through doing business, the good, the bad, and the ugly of it, when most people didn't take just their toe into it. You know, so there's that element of it. Well, hang on, if you're not down here fighting and doing it like I am, then you don't get an opinion. No, because if you're not, you can't compare it to what we're doing. So it was trying to keep that kind of focus on, you know, nobody knows what you're going through except you. So only you will really know the right 
decisions and how it feels and how you've come to that conclusion. Yeah. And you have to be okay with it for yourself. And then that confidence will come back, you know, to come back and do whatever it is that you've decided to do. We've even seen it with some of our, with our um, customers who might've had salons and, you know, had this kind of moment during the year of, I don't think I'll reopen because I, you know, I want to be with my kids. They're small and I know I can come back and, and do this. And I've done it once and I know I could start again and open a salon again or I could do it again. And, you know, it took them like all of last year to kind of realize this and come to terms with, it's okay to make decisions for my life that make me happier, that maybe people are like, but you had a salon and you were doing this. It was like, well, you know, they to get that kind of confidence of going, this is my one life. This is my one go. And this is what I'm going to do now. Is it what I'm going to do in two years? No, because in three years ago, we didn't know that we were going to be closed for a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So everything's changing and evolving, but it's kind of having the confidence to find your way. You're, happy with what you're doing and that it's again it's coming back to you know whatever your brand values were and that it's that it's just true to you oh so i i don't i'm all just so consumed by what you were saying there i'm trying to pull myself <laughs> together again but so like you're especially i want i, I kind of end off all the podcasts with this kind of um like uh, advice for businesses that are listening but you're so good at putting your voice to your brand and i know when i mentor in businesses this is something that they struggle with and i get it people aren't as vocal maybe as you and i aren't maybe able to project themselves the way we do and that's totally grand not everybody can be the way you know we we are on social where you're not afraid but have you any tips for anyone who maybe feels they might be able to but just can't break that barrier and you know because there is people out there and I know if they just broke yeah. through that kind of confidence they could be amazing so have you any wee tips for them I think there's kind of two parts so one is going back pen to paper on what your business is and really understanding you're, you know, it's not just uh, you've picked the name and then one day you wrote out the, the values and your vision and your mission and you never look back at it. Like it's really going back to that piece and being sure, is that really 100% what you are standing for? You're absolutely blinders on that that is you unwavering. Is that still correct? And having a look at that piece. And then um, whether you, people have done it at the start or maybe they only need to do it now, breaking down your um, customer persona. So who is your customer? And I mean, not like, you know, from 18 to 35. No, I want a name, what exact age, where, what kind of house they live in, what do they, do they drive? Do what, you know, do they go to school, college? What do they like to watch on the telly? Where do they shop? What clothes do they shop? Like you want to know this person, this imaginary customer of yours, as if you were describing your friend. I think doing those kind of pieces are really crucial because when you get flustered and you're, you don't know what you're doing and you don't know, should I jump on this and should I do this and what will I do? That you're going, well, hang on a second. My customer, Jess, what is she like? Is she watching Snapchat or is she consuming TikTok or where, you know, is she still on Facebook or, you know, it kind of can give you some clarity to help. So really tease out those bits and become, you know, solid on that before you kind of you move on because I think you will refer to that you know that's going to be your you know engraved in stone type of thing and um, with your values that you it'll make other decisions a lot easier and then the piece that you're saying about people being afraid to kind of come on or talk or give it a go I think um you know it's easy to say like just do it just start but when you start and it's authentic and it's something that you know is the way to do it, whatever way you want to approach it, that it is your brand and it's truly authentic for you, it's a lot easier. And then I would always, always be a huge advocate of, uh, you know, getting help, like reaching out to other experts and, you know, paying to do a course. Everything's going to be online now, of course, but maybe to do a session with somebody who can help you with that confidence. Maybe it's that you need a little bit of coaching. So I'd always be, you know, big believer of, uh, you know, get the, the expert in to help you with where you're lacking. Not everybody is great at everything, 
So where you need that extra support or coaching, then go out and seek that out and get that. And it's probably great now because it can be done, you know, on Zoom or, you know, at your desk or at home or whatever. And that can give you that helpful skill, you know, if it is that like the confidence thing that you don't want to you kind of need the help or the hand holding there, you know, that could be hugely beneficial and, you know, it would pay off in spades. Um, so I firmly believe get the experts in to help you where you're not confident that you need that extra um, help, but also be really sure on what you're trying to communicate and you're not the same as whoever your competitor is or whoever you enjoy watching. You're very different. You have a different business, probably. So you're going to communicate in a way that is authentic to you. And I think once you're doing that, you'll be flying. Flying. <laughs> I love that. So, so um, I think there'll be people really maybe get inspired, say, right, I'm going to, I always love listening to podcasts when at the end you're like, I'm flipping going to do it. She said, just do it. So, yeah, like, give it a go. Give it, give a, it go. a go. What, you know, the worst that can happen. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you don't feel comfortable, you, you know, it might take time or it might just be that you need that. You go, yeah, actually, I never thought of that. I'm going to see who's doing, you know, one to ones or who's the best person that could coach me in doing this. You know, not everything is, you know, just a natural yeah. thing that you open up your phone and you go for it. You know, yeah. just coaching in all senses of, of running a business. So maybe this is just the area, the way other people would outsource their bookkeeping. That could be easy peasy for you to do it in your sleep. And other people could do social media or marketing in their sleep. You know, you have to find where you want that additional support. Alan, thank you so much. I I really appreciate you talking to everybody today. I could keep talking to you like there's so much we could talk about, but I think <laughs> I think that has given people a great idea for all the challenges and the way you've navigated through and then tips and advice. And if anybody's listening and they want to keep following your journey, how do they do that? Where do they find you? How do they get the new hair products? Whatever. Tell us all where we can catch up with you. Yeah, sure. So for hair, it's at hair wax. Okay. And it's hairwax.com. And um, so that's our at-home waxing kit. Our salon in Dunleary, which hopefully will be reopening soon, is at Wax First. And then if you're a beauty professional and you're interested in doing any training um, or having Wax First in your salon, we're at Wax First Wax. Amazing. Okay. Thank you so much, Alan. I wish you all the best now. My pleasure. As, as we the restrictions ease and hopefully life kind of gets back to a new normal anyway. Um, I wish you and your family safety and continued success in your business. And maybe someday we'll meet face to face and not over Zoom, which we're all doing. I, I, would, I would love that. Good and the best to you too. Yeah, take Thank care. you so much. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Dig Podcast. If you missed anything, we've made some show notes with links and all the good stuff we've covered today. Also, don't forget to screenshot this episode and tag Dig for Success so we can reshare on our stories. So remember to hit the subscribe button and I will see you all on the next episode.